Troy. Joe, how's it going? It's going great. Good. I'm here to ask you 73 questions. I know you are. <laughs> You've been Come waiting inside. a long time for this. I have been. Can you tell? I'm really, really excited. I'm excited too. Good. So tell me, how does it feel now that you're on break from your tour? I am so happy to be home. Um, but also the last few months have been like the best few months of my life. It's been so fun. How many countries have you been to? I think it was like 15 countries oh. since January. So it's pretty nuts. What country fans stand out the most to you? Oh, uh, China, actually. And what was the best part about touring? Getting to see the cities, but also obviously playing the shows. What was the worst part about touring? Oh my god, jet lag. Um, speaking of, would you like some coffee? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. How am I going to take this? Well, I mean, if we were in Australia and I had some huge fancy coffee machine, I would make you a flat white. Um, but all we have is this, so I will give you this. All right, now speaking of Australia, fellow Aussie Margot Robbie gave you a shout out in her 73 questions. I know, I saw. And what do you want to shout out to her? Oh my god, okay. Margo, I love ya. Um, we've never met, but I would very, very, very much like to be your friend, please. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Okay, how much are you missing Australia at the moment? Oh my god, I miss it all the time, always, so much. What is Australia better at than America? Coffee. Hmm. You may be right. Mm hmm What is America better at than Australia? Um, I mean, this California weather is hard to beat. What's one thing Americans say that you love the most? I love all the little names you guys have for your snacks and things. Um, <laughs> Ding-dongs, ho-hos, Twinkies, corn dogs, that stuff really cracks me up. What's one thing Australians say that you love the most? I like how inoffensive it is to swear in Australia. It's like, it's no biggie. I'm gonna ask the question everyone wanted me to ask you. Oh, okay. When are you bleaching your hair next? Oh my God, never, ever. Um, <laughs> no, maybe one day, but for now, it fried my hair, so I'm trying to I'm trying to stay away from that. All right. Well, this is a beautiful home. Thank you. I wish I could say this is my place. Um, it's my manager's house. Okay. But I actually did live here for like six months when I first moved to LA. Nice. And uh, how easy or difficult is it to write music at this point in your life? Ooh, uh, you're going to have to ask me that question in like two weeks because I'm about to start writing. What song of yours has been the most challenging to write? The Good Side. Do you always feel like you have something to say? I don't, and that's why I don't always say stuff. I kind of keep oh, my mouth shut. Hi, Nash. Cameo from Nash. How's it going? That's great. In a number of oh. your songs, the, <laughs> the lyrics are very personal. Um, yeah. Do you ever get emotional when performing them on stage? I do, but um, the thing that makes me emotional is like seeing people sing the songs back at me and kind of feeling their experiences through the song. Mm. If you were stuck on an island with only one of your songs, what song would it be? My um, mind. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. For me, it would be Ease. Cool. First Nash, now we have Jacob, yep. great cameos here. Yep, yep. Now you guys have been together for three years. Three yeah. years. What was your first impression of Troy? My first impression of Troy was that he was confident and very sweet and pretty chill. Thank you. Um, what was the first impression of Jacob? I would say my first impression, tall, honestly, was like the first thing, but then, but then sweet and lovely and kind. Oh, that's Thank nice. You. Now yeah. please answer in the following questions at the same exact time. Okay. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Who's more high maintenance? Jacob. Me. Who's a better dancer? You. Um, I don't feel like either of us... It's definitely I you. I wouldn't say I'm a good dancer. I can maybe like Fair. wiggle around a little bit. It's you. Who Thank does you. Nash love more? Me. Me. No. Me. 100% me because no, I feed me. him his dinner all the time. No, and look me. who he's sitting next to. Okay. See? Who is each of yours celebrity crush? Um, Shawn Mendes. Harry Styles. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. See ya. So what's up with these uh, candles? Oh, okay, so these candles, um, I'm like testing out some scents and things mm -hmm. for a, a little project. Mm. Does this smell too floral, do you reckon? <sighs> Smells like a cloud in heaven. Thank you. Um, nice. Another little project. Can yeah. I, give me your hand for a second. My hand. Yes, please. Well, my hand. I want to put a little bit of this white nail polish on okay. you. That's fine. So Troy, I loved your performance in Boy Raced. It was great. Thank what made you. you decide to take a role like that? Um, for me, it was, you know, I, I read the script and was just like blown away and the message and also the cast. I was like, this is going to be a movie that actually really means something that's going to be made well. Yeah. And you said it was such a difficult experience. Um, yeah. I mean, it was, it was terrifying, kind of, you know, intimidating. And I feel like I left, though, a much more empathetic person. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really kind of just, um, I learned a lot about the issue and, and about the people mm -hmm. who the issue affects. And yeah. All right. Let's see how this looks. I think this is a new look for me. <laughs> it's kind of terrible. I'm sorry. I didn't say I was any good, but I think you look really pretty. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. All right. What single event has impacted you the most in life? 
Um, probably coming out. Mm. Mm-hmm. You did it on YouTube. I did do it on How YouTube. How did you know when it was the right moment to do that? Um, you know, I just got to this place where I was like so gay in my personal life and really proud of it. And I was like, you know what? I want to share this with the whole world. Now, you recently said you felt uncomfortable being called a gay icon. Mm. Why is that? Well, I just, from experience, have seen that the LGBTQ community is so unbelievably diverse and looks like so many people that um, to kind of be picked as like one of the faces of the community, it just made me really uncomfortable and mm. um, felt weird and scary. Now, your mom organized a huge petition to abolish the gay panic law. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so in Australia, there was this really old law called gay panic where um, if somebody murdered someone, but then they were like, oh, no, they were coming on to me and I got so scared. I'm not gay. I got so scared that I killed them. Um, their sentence could get downgraded. Mm. And my mum heard about it and was like, this is absolutely ludicrous and put together a really big online petition and helped get it abolished. Mm, that's incredible. Yeah. Do you think growing up with YouTube and sharing your personality and identity with the internet has prepared you for fame? I think so to a certain extent, but at the same time, like nothing in this world could prepare me for Vogue and you like knocking on my front door. So I don't think I'm ever going to get used to this. I didn't come here for compliments. I know, but... <laughs> I, all right, what do you think of when you watch videos of yourself at such a young age? Oh my god, I cringe <laughs> so hard and wonder why I did the things that I did. What's the craziest or funniest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Mm, one time I heard that I'm actually like secretly straight and um, I don't fully understand like what my motive would be for doing that. Like, is it, am I trying to pick up girls as like a gay man or I don't, I really don't get it. Um, you want to go outside, by yeah. the way? All right, so what's your uh, best beauty hack? Um, don't wash your hair too often. It dries it out and you don't need to. What's the boldest outfit that you've ever worn? Uh, probably a green suit, like a full green suit. And, uh, what's your go-to look on an off day? Probably this. Like, you know, if you could find a really good white tee and really good jeans, um, you know, you're away. How do you think your style has progressed over the years? Oh, I am so much more confident in the way that I dress now. And when you're choosing a look, what is the first thing that you're drawn to? Probably practicality. Um, yeah, just like kind of understated and cool while still being stylish. What are you binge watching at the moment? Oh, I just finished watching Jailbirds on Netflix. It's so good. Right. What is the uh, best thing that you've seen in the past five years? Um, the favorite. What's the most rewarding experience that you've ever had in your life? Um, I think it's probably getting to work with all the LGBTQ organizations that I work with. What fan interactions delight you the most? The ones where when you're squeezing and hugging them, you can feel there's some, some stuff going on in their lives and you kind of get to have this moment where everything feels a little bit better for a second. Nice. Why do you have a bathtub in your backyard? Why do you not have a bathtub in your backyard? <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm asking you. This is like the single most relaxing place in the entire world. If you ever just want to cool out, get naked, get in a bubble bath, outdoors. It's amazing. All right, what's Ariana Grande like in person? Oh, I mean, she is like even more charismatic funny and sweet than you can possibly imagine. What did Taylor Swift mean to you growing up? I mean, I think I'm mostly inspired by her songwriting. I think that she's such a badass songwriter and that was really inspiring to me. Can you rank your top three Taylor Swift songs? Yes, um, Delicate, Blank Space, and You're In Love. Who's the first person uh, to hear your lyrics when you write them? Uh, My co-writers or my boyfriend. Who's the most intimidating person you've ever worked with? Probably Rufus Wainwright. I am a huge fan and we wrote a song once and um, it was scary. (laughs) Okay, tell me, do you have to be in love to write a love song or sad to write a sad song? I think you have to be in love to write a good love song, but I don't think you have to be sad to write a good sad song. Do you ever get starstruck? I do. I was starstruck by you 10 minutes ago. It's your Troy. Seriously. (laughs) Come on. What's your favorite book? The Monkey. Um, I just finished this book called A Little Life that absolutely tore my heart out of my chest. What's your favorite cocktail? Um, a dirty martini, like extra dirty. Nice. Yeah. Uh, acting versus music, which one do you find more challenging? Acting, for sure. Would you ever consider one over the other? No. What type of role would be a dream role for you? Um, probably something dramatic and kind of a little meatier than anything I've done in the past. Can you name an actor whose choices and roles you admire today? Lucas Hedges. Would you rather perform in front of a 300-person show or 30,000-person show? Um, 30,000. <laughs> What's your favorite song to cover? Uh, Love is a Losing Game by Amy Winehouse. I love that song so much. Who's an artist everyone should be paying attention to right now? Lizzo, big time. 
What are your top three favorite albums that inspired or informed your musical style? Um, Body Talk by Robin, Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, and Blue by Joni Mitchell. Best. And you model for Saint Laurent Runway Show. Hardly, but yes. All right, can you show me uh, a little bit of your walk right now? What do you think? I can, but you will soon see why I never did it again. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Do you think you would ever, uh, you know, model again? I think I would do like a campaign or something, but walking runway is really scary for me. I need some tips, babe. <laughs> All right, cue the music. It. All right, ready? Yep. Cue the music. Three, two, one. Troy! I can't even keep a straight face, I'm sorry. <laughs> Blue steel. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. What the heck are you sitting in? Oh, this is, um, I think it's called a spun chair, and I'm pretty sure its sole purpose is just to do that, which yeah. is, whoa, did you get a fright? <laughs> sorry, Bobby. Um, yeah, it's fun. How would you describe yourself to someone who's never heard of you? Um, skinny, white, um, gay <laughs> kid? No, I don't know. I mean, creative, artist, songwriter, something like that. How would your friends describe you to someone who's never heard of you? Um, what would they say? I think they would probably say, I really hope they would say like loyal and mm -hmm. nice maybe. I hope. Have you ever needed to take a break from all the social media? All the time. I, I put my phone down and like leave it at home all the time. Have you ever felt it affected your mental health negatively? For sure. That's why I take breaks. Yeah. What's the best advice that you've ever received? Don't get a big head or I'll give you a smack. And it was from my mom. What did you learn from your biggest mistake? Um, wear more sun cream. It's the first thing that came to mind. I am currently peeling from a bad sunburn on vacation. How do you maintain a healthy mindset, Troy? Oh, I mean, very LA of me, but I, I do therapy, I meditate now, and I also work out. I can't, I mean, you can't tell at the moment because I haven't done it in a couple of weeks, but I normally work out. Troy, we're gonna do something that we've never done before, and can I ask you, last question, question number 73, how do you feel about jumping in this pool? There is absolutely no chance in hell. I'm not even wearing my bathers. Just do it! Shut up, babe. Troy, I'm gonna do this with you, don't worry. Okay, fine, I'm going in with my clothes on. All right, three, two, one. And that's going in the history books. You didn't jump. Troy, I don't know how to swim. <laughs>